This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host, Brian, and today we're gonna start talking about how can we save some money as contractors? So as we're all aware, inflation this year is what, 7%? Not to mention you've got rising fuel costs, not to mention we have supply chain issues, not to mention we have a whole host of other things that are causing all of our expenses to go up in the industry. I mean, labor, look at labor. We're having to pay more and more every day for labor because of the labor shortage we're all experiencing. So how can we start to save some money in other areas of our business? That's what I'm here with Sean Whitaker to talk about today, is how we can save money on taking care of our equipment without sacrificing taking care of our equipment. We can extend our drain intervals without actually being detrimental to the machine. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm gonna turn over to Sean and let him explain. But before we get into that, I wanna take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now, I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. So my first question, just to kind of answer the question for everyone out there, it may seem really obvious to most people, but why worry about extending the drain time on, on your equipment? What, what is the real big motivation behind this? Well, I'll tell you, many of our customers, and I'm guessing a lot of your viewers too, are running a business. And so one of the biggest things they're trying to do is improve operational efficiency. And um, one great way to do that is to um, re reduce your maintenance costs. And, uh, you know, if done responsibly, extending oil drain intervals is uh, one of the avenues that you can do that. And when we talk about extending drain intervals, realistically, how much more life are we getting? Are we talking 20% more life? Are we talking 50% more life? Or how, how do you kind of gauge that? Well, I mean, it's difficult to generalize, but I would say that, that a realistic target could be to double your drain intervals. So that would essentially be cutting the number of oil changes that you do in a given year, any given time period in half. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a one size fits all answer, but there's, I think, a, a variety of ways that it can be evaluated and, um, you know, certainly moving from what historically has been a, sort of an average of 250 hour oil changes um, could certainly be pushed out to 500 or more um, under the right circumstances. And just so we're all speaking about the same subject here, we're not talking about just not changing the oil for an extra oil change we are actually and in, as a result of that being detrimental to the machine we're talking about doing this in a safe and healthy way so that the machine's life is not impacted correct absolutely we would never advocate for you know putting the equipment or your business at additional risk i think it's really a matter of doing it responsibly and you know the, one one of the things that there's been a lot done i guess i would say over the years to get us there. It's the combination of improved hardware design and improved engine oils that have sort of unlocked the ability to go farther than historically has been the case. So small time contractor, I've been in the business for 20 years. I always religiously changed my oil at the 250 hour mark, but now I'm hearing this newfangled idea that I should extend those oil drain times. What tools do I need in my arsenal to actually make educated decisions about when I need to change that oil? Well, the best starting point is with 
you know, the operator's manual. And so whether that be something that's in the glove box or something that can be accessed a lot electronically or through some sort of app is really take, take a look at what uh, the equipment builder recommends for your type of operation. So that can be a function of the type of engine that you have, the type of equipment that, you know, that you're running, um, your duty cycle. So the amount of fuel that you burn, the amount of idle time that you average. Um, all of these things kind of factor into um, today's recommendation. There's, you know, there's usually a, a standard interval, but then there oftentimes is sort of this variable interval that depends upon all of those different circumstances. One of, one of the other things that's actually quite common in certain types of off-highway equipment is to have variable sump sizes. So you, you, you could actually spec out a larger oil sump. And typically when you have more oil floating around you, that usually allows it to uh, be used longer. So to kind of summarize all of that, I can actually get into doing extended oil changes. I need to rephrase that so it sounds correct. I can get into having an extended oil life program without having any special tools, without getting into an oil testing program. This can this can be as simple as downloading the newest update of the manual for the machine or calling the dealership and asking what the, the interval drain time is. Oftentimes that's the case and it really kind of depends on the situation. But if you're using a, a historic norm and not really examining what you might qualify on some of your newer equipment, um, you, you may be kind of leaving money on the table because you're not actually e even taking advantage of the recommendation that, that it is kind of relevant for your, your current operation. Interesting. So now again, going back as I'm that small to mid-sized contractor and I decide I really want to go hardcore at this and I want to get into fluid testing. Realistically, for a small to mid-sized contractor, is fluid testing uh, kind of cost effective or does that really on a couple pieces of equipment is my cost of extending the oil life offset by the fact that I'm now paying for this oil testing service? Kind of how is that going to play into it? Yeah, I, I think in, in most cases, taking on an oil analysis program has a number of benefits. So oftentimes, you know, only one of the benefits is actually the, to examine oil life and maybe you know, gauge the opportunity to do a drain interval extension. Um, the other thing that oil sampling can do and is oftentimes gives you the biggest payback is its ability to give you insight into kind of predictive maintenance aspects. So there are there are clues in used oil analysis that can tell you that something's about to go wrong before it becomes catastrophic and and can be kind of preemptively dealt with and not until, not after the fact. So to kind of summarize what I just heard is stop thinking about it as an oil only cost and start looking at it overall you're paying for the ability to start doing some predictive maintenance on the machine and and that's a portion of the cost is going to be allocated there. Absolutely. And then the, one of the great things today is that we've got such much more sophisticated tools to deliver the information in a timely fashion that allows you to take action. So there was a point in time when you you know, take an oil sample and you'd send it somewhere and then you'd, you know, wait a few weeks and you'd get a letter in the mail and it would have a result and you'd have to kind of make sense of it all. The, you know, the, the internet age has unlocked some capabilities that make this, um, I don't say quite real time, but, but uh, gives you information in a much more quicker fashion and allows you to, um, put those results in context. They can, they can come graph. They can come with uh, red, yellow, green indicators that give you at least a sense of whether things are good or something is, um, starting to go bad and even some advice about how to uh, react to the results you get. And it comes a lot faster because, you know, just the tools that, um, are available today, may, maybe even through an app. My, my final question here is kind of again for the smaller contractor, the mid-sized contractor that has never dabbled in oil analysis. In my mind, I always think of a couple guys that you have on staff full time that are wearing white lab coats and they get paid a ridiculous amount of money to wear safety glasses and take oil samples and mail. In reality, as a small contractor, how feasible is it to get into a fluid testing or a fluid analysis program and get that set up and, and how hard is it to maintain? 
probably easier than you think. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that would, you know, it's a good starting point would be to have a discussion with your oil uh, supplier. Oftentimes they are kind of paired up with oil analysis programs and they can kind of put it put in a turnkey kind of approach for your operation that includes the fluids and and the analysis in, in one bundle. Um, but, but also just kind of um, start having that discussion. And, you know, I think that you'll find that the, it's, it's a fairly simple and routine process. Um, they can give you uh, kits that enable the sample to be taken, um, you know, really, really easily. It's something that can just be thrown in the mail and sent off to the lab and um, results delivered electronically with uh, some of the advice that uh, accompanies it. Um, it's, it's not as complicated as it might sound. All of that sounds doable. It sounds approachable. It, it doesn't sound like it's a big, scary thing, which I have always thought of that as being a big, scary thing, a big hurdle that you're going to go invest 20 grand in equipment and testing stuff or vials or whatever it's going to. But but really, it's as simple as kind of getting in touch with one of these companies and they send out the equipment that you need as far as vials and and the the protocols for testing. The sample kits, the sample bottles, um, detailed instructions about what to do with it, uh, prepaid mailing labels that can just be slapped on the bottle and um, thrown in, in, you know, U.S. mail and off it goes. Um, yeah, it's it's relatively turnkey. And I think when you examine it in its entirety, um, offers, you know, the potential for significant payback. So it's not just about the predictive maintenance. Uh, and the extension and, you know, buying less oil and less filters. But um, you're actually, at the end of the day, you're keeping the equipment in service more often. And it's it's that reduced operational downtime that of, oftentimes <laughs> creates the biggest payback in, at the end of the day. Well, Sean, as always, thank you. This has been really, really informational. And, and I appreciate you kind of breaking it down for all of us dirt guys on the front lines. Yeah, uh, great to be here. As always, thank you for Chevron and for Sean specifically. I feel like Sean's been on the show enough that I could almost refer to him as a co-host at this point. But it's always a pleasure talking with Sean. He's always got a lot of great wisdom to spread with us. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it can help you guys save on some of your ongoing maintenance costs with your equipment so that we can continue to have dare I say decent margins in this industry. I think we're all we, we all know that margins aren't fantastic in this industry, but that's why we try to squeeze every last penny out of our machines and our business that we can. So I hope this helps. We'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.